Hello once again and welcome to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration with Crestorio 2. And once again we are still pitting what's left of our wits against the end game puzzle and so this video will contain a lot of spoilers. Or maybe we're doing everything completely wrong and it's completely spoiler free, who knows. So I'm afraid that means if you want to avoid the potential spoilers you'd better stop watching the video now. Tomorrow's video will be about normal Factorio things for normal Factorio people and so it'll be safe to return then. Now that disclaimer is out of the way, I can tell you that we went into the last stream feeling pretty positive. We had an idea of how the whole glyph system worked and a list of glyphs we wanted to try plugging into the Stargate. Or rather, Tristan and Mike both had two different sets of glyphs from different methods of predicting the answer and none of them matched. Perhaps this should have been a bit of a warning sign for us. Still, they bravely started plugging them in to see what they found. And before I show you the results, however, let's take a bit of a look at how they approach the calculations. Remember, these calculations were done with the game closed. We had some information from previous Stargate attempts and from the long range star mapping, so we'd made copies of all those coordinates we'd received and, and kept them out, taken them out of the game to use with the calculations. But they weren't testing things as they went, at least not at first. They were just trying to take the knowledge they had and turn it into a complete solution. I believe we started off with Mike's first answer. He was happy with the idea that the first glyph chooses one of the faces on the Pentakis dodecahedron, and then the other seven glyphs pick out a smaller sub-triangle from that triangle, working ever smaller and smaller until you get down to a really small triangle. His first problem, however, was that we're still unable to get the actual real corner coordinates for the triangles. We can go quite a long way into the corners, but we still end up at the centre of a very small triangle in the corner. He reckoned that this would only introduce an error of about 10 to the minus 7 though, which he reckoned was acceptable. Despite not knowing the true edges of the triangle, he continued on undeterred. His methodology, as I understand it, was to take the spreadsheet that he'd made for the interburbulator puzzle and then massively, massively expand it, considering each pair of the smallest triangles to be a single unit, because then they have four sides, which he then tried to solve for later. We'll come back to this in a moment and see how well his point landed after we've taken a quick look at Tristan's methodology. Tristan reckoned on finding the corners of the first triangle by averaging the centre coordinates of each of the first level triangles around that corner, and then normalising that vector to a unit length. This would be five coordinates for the vertex at the centre of the pentagonal pyramid and six points for the two edge vertices. Once he had his theoretical corner points, he was then able to divide each edge of the triangle into eight to work out the coordinates of the 64 sub-triangles. He could then work out which second level triangle the target was in, calculate the vertices and then repeat splitting the sides into eight again to go in closer, getting the third level, fourth level and so on. As you can now see as we zoom in on the sphere, None of these guesses were quite right, although Tristan's second attempt was relatively close. Not close enough to actually satisfy the puzzle though, and so they continued their work on it during the stream. These ponderings allowed them to come up with a few possible causes of the inaccuracies. The biggest one is probably going to come from treating the coordinates as if they're on a plane, when actually the triangles are on the surface of a sphere. This, thinking cartesianally, will also have thrown off the original calculations to get the very corners of the initial triangle, and since the entire rest of the calculation rests on this, it's no wonder that it's caused problems. Tristan has been considering using polar coordinates, however this is leading to some severe brain melt and so we've not gone too far down that path. Mike has been trying to work with the most coronary points he could get to using the Stargate as a scanner and that means he was working with a slightly smaller triangle than the real one and that would also cause issues. He has since worked that through with Tristan and fixed the numbers or at least made some big improvements to them. So in theory, we could probably solve it empirically by checking each stage to see which triangle centre is closest to the point and then going in an extra level and repeating this. However, this does feel like cheating. We would much rather get a sufficiently strong understanding of how the coordinates work that we can go straight into the final point with no extra messing around. In short, a lot of thinking and quite a bit of experimentation has been done. However, we're still some way from pointing the Stargate where we want to go. And each test takes about five minutes of fiddling around with the Stargate nodes to set it up. So we don't want to do too many of those if we can avoid it. And this is another reason to solve it mathematically rather than um, empirically and just and experimentally. And it's gonna mean playing around with something a bit more interesting than just trying to load endless glyphs into the Stargate. Since the stream, they've both done a significant amount of further thinking against the problem, but of course haven't tested any of the new theories yet. That will come in the stream on Monday, and I'm very curious to see what they've come up with. I would also like to try to solve it myself, however, um, I'm not sure I'm going to have the time, and also my brain will probably melt as well. 
<laughs> I hope you're looking forward to seeing the next set of attempts though and will come along to join us on Monday night. I'll also be back on Wednesday with some more Satisfactory where I'll be checking over my changes to the oil and plastic system from last week and then going off to look at which part of the final production system is currently the biggest bottleneck. I'll also have some more Factorio update videos for you this weekend and who knows, maybe this time I'll actually be able to announce a great victory over the Stargate. Let's hope so. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.